let's now have the inferential statistics. The procedure involves hypothesis testing, which allow us to draw conclusion. And we will utilize the traditional method of hypothesis testing, and that is the critical level approach. Starting off with comparing two means from normally distributed data using the t-tests. Let's have the independent samples t-test. It's a test that compares two groups on the mean value of a continuous weather interval or ratio, normally distributed variables. And the formula is, you have a long formula, but uh, you'll find later that it's easy to use. The formula reads, P is equal to, M stands for the mean, and X and Y stands for the two groups. So the mean of X minus the mean of Y, all over square root of the quantity summation x squared minus summation x you have to square over n of x plus you do the same procedure with the group y all over n of x plus n of y minus 2 times 1 over n of x plus 1 over n of y let's apply the concept so we have here exercise 2 the data below were recorded uh, from a study where the oxygen uptake in ML during incubation of two sets of cell suspensions, one buffered and one unbuffered. Is there difference in the mean oxygen uptake between the buffered and unbuffered cell suspension? So the two groups that we will be comparing are the buffered cell suspension and the unbuffered cell suspension let's start with the null hypothesis so the null hypothesis is the hypothesis of no difference so our null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the mean oxygen uptake between the buffered and unbuffered cell suspensions in symbol null hypothesis is uh, represented by H sub 0. It can be read as H naught or H0 or even HO. So the symbol says that the mean of X is equal to the mean of Y because there's no difference. Now for the alternative hypothesis, it's the hypothesis of significance. So you can simply remove the no. So the alternative hypothesis that I wrote there is there is significant difference in the mean oxygen uptake between the buffered and unbuffered cell suspension. So in symbol, it's H1. So you can see that the mean of X is not equal to the mean of Y because there is difference. In hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis being tested is being tested. If the null hypothesis is accepted, it will be our conclusion. On the other hand, if the null hypothesis is rejected, the alternative hypothesis will be our conclusion. So, the test that we will be using is the independent sample t-test or unpaired two sample t-test because uh, we will be comparing two different groups. Let's start solving the problem. So the formula that we will be using is the long formula. But first, we need to complete the table. So the first column is the data for the first group or setup because uh, obviously it's a pure science experimental research. So the first group or first setup is the buffered cell suspension. It corresponds to the X group and these are the oxygen uptake. The second column is the data for the second group or second setup, the Y group, and these are the 
oxygen uptake. The third column is labeled as x squared. So we will simply square the values on the x column. So the first entry is 169. It came from squaring the 13. And the last column is labeled as y squared. Uh, you simply square the data on the y column. So our first entry is 81. It came from squaring the 9. That's how we complete the data. Next, we need to get the summation or the sum of the values in each of the column. So, the sum of the numbers in the X column is 67. On the Y column, it's 37. On the X squared column, it's 903. And on the Y squared column, it's 279. Now, get the mean of each of the two groups. So, in other words, it's 67 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, the answer is 13.40. Uh, for the Y group, it's 37 divided by 5 as well. So, the answer is 7.40. So, let's substitute, substitute the values to our equation. So, by substitution, we have 13.40 minus 7.40 from the mean of the two groups all over the square root of 903 came from the sum of the x squared minus 67 the 67 is the sum of the x column you have to square over 9 plus you do the same procedure for the y data or y column so 279 came from the square of the y values minus 37 came from the sum of the y column squared over 5 all over 5 plus 5 minus 2 times the quantity 1 over the n of x or the number of uh, cases in x column so that's 5 plus 1 over the number of cases on the y column that's also 5 so by calculation the value of t is 8.33 Notice that the n of x plus n of y minus 2 is actually our degrees of freedom, which will be used in finding the critical value later. So next, determine the critical value from the table with respect to the level of significance and degrees of freedom. The level of significance is commonly, that's the alpha, 0.05. The degrees of freedom is equal to the n of x plus n of y minus 2. So that's 5 plus 5 minus 2 equals 8. Uh, let's consider the alternative hypothesis. Since in our alternative hypothesis, uh, the statement is that the mean of x is not equal to the mean of y. Therefore, there's no direction. You're not saying that it is less than or greater than. So, it means that the test is two-tailed. So, from our table, that's two-tailed. So, we need to indicate that. The alpha of 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom of 8. So, the points meet at a number which is 2.3060 and that is our critical level so using our bell curve the unshaded part is the region of acceptance where the null hypothesis will be accepted now the two sides which are the tails represent the region of rejection. So, our critical value on the right side is positive 2.3060. On the left side, it's negative 2.3060. So, next, 
There you go. That's the critical level. Next, uh, we have to compare the calculated T with the critical value. Remember that the calculated T is 8.33, which is located beyond the region of acceptance or it is located at the region of rejection. Therefore, we can say that the calculated T value of 8.33 is greater than the critical value of 2.3060. Hence, the null hypothesis HO cannot be accepted. In other words, HO is rejected. So, how can we present the results? We present this way. So, we have here the table and then we can show the or we can have the name of the two groups the number of cases the mean oxygen or the average oxygen uptake and then the t calculated which is 8.33 the critical level which is 2.306 and the decision is to reject the hypothesis now i would like to emphasize that the presentation is different when SPSS is utilized because the acceptance or rejection of HO is based on SIG values.